okay hello everyone i am himanshu vasnani i am here to deliver a lecture on the subject material science subject code is me207 unit 1 lecture number 4 the topic name is point imperfections and line defects so i am here to start of my lecture the today's objective is to make students understand and have a basic understanding of point imperfections and types of line defects usually they are found in uh, material they are found in material science uh you can you should you can study in the topic of defects or imperfection in books also and our outcome will be the students have learned the basics uh, of various types of point imperfection and line defects and the various parameters of these two kinds of defects so uh, let us start up uh what do you mean by defects or imperfection in crystals uh not not what happens that natural crystals always contain defects okay and uh, often in abundance due to uh, uncontrolled conditions under which they were formed the presence of defects uh, which affect the color can make these crystal valuable as gems as certain ruby when chromium replacing small fraction of aluminum in Uh, aluminum, uh, aluminum, aluminum oxide (Al2O3). Uh, C. Defects, as you know, the word if it occurs outside, like you have might have seen in welding, some kinds of defects they occur, like uh, uh, we can say. Uh, like uh, when you are welding a weld zone due to some uh, some gases are trapped at the welded zone then some crater kind of uh, defect come or some linear defect may come or while casting also some defects like uh, blow holes or porosity or uh, cold shut these kinds these kinds of defects may come but Uh, when we talk about crystals something just uh, defect in the crystal something inside then these kind of defects also do, we have to consider now what happens in this like they talk about just crystals any defect in the crystal will lead to some uh, you can say uh, defect in the appearance also like crystals are prepared in the laboratory will also contain defects although considerable control may be exercised over their type concentration and distribution this is a small introduction then the importance of defects depends upon the material the type of defect and the properties of which they of uh, property which are being considered whenever we talking about defects we have to understand that the defects these depend upon which material it is made up of then what is the type of defect it is showing and the properties here the properties depends upon both the things that is the at the occurrence of the material uh, how the material has occurred and secondly what uh, processing has been done on for manufacturing so some properties such as density and lasting constant are proportional to the concentration of defects and so a small defect concentration will have a very small effect on the on these so this was a slight introduction about defects or imperfection in crystals now uh, if you give for further other properties like the color of an insulating crystal or the uh, um, the color of an insulating crystal or the conductivity of a semiconductor crystal may be much more sensitive to the presence of small number of defects indeed while the term defect carries with it the connotation of undesirable quantities you understand defect carries with it the connotation of undesirable quality defects are responsible for many of the important properties of material 
means it is saying that somehow see the word defect is somehow negative somehow negative in what sense ki it will show that it has to be rejected or it is kind of a flaw okay the part has to be rejected or kind of a flaw but here if in some cases it gives some important properties and uh, um you can say uh, these properties bring some changes in the materials also and material science involves the study and engineering of defects so that the solids will have a desired properties like a defect free that is ideal silicon crystal would be of little use in modern electronics the use of silicon in electric electron devices is dependent upon small concentration of chemical impurities such as phosphorus and arsenic which give it desired properties this saying you know that like in use of electronics a silicon ideal silicon is less useful but if it has impurities of phosphorus and arsenic then it uses increased because of better properties because of desired properties okay now some simple defects in a lattice that are shown in figure yes i'll show you later on like uh, and there are also uh, properties of materials such as stiffness or density electrical conductivity that term the structure insensitive are not affected by the presence of defects in the crystals while there are many properties these of great chemical great technical importance such as mechanical strength ductility crystal growth magnetic hysteresis dielectric strength condition in magnetic conductors which are termed structure sensitive are greatly affected by the relatively minor changes in crystal structure caused by defects or imperfections we have uh, studied about the different uh, properties of like stiffness and density electric conductivity they are turned as social insensitive no why but there are also properties like mechanical strength ductility and other properties so we the the this is saying that some properties some you can say uh, properties they get benefited if some uh, you can or you can say benefited or affected both ways okay affected benefited both ways by the presence of some kind of defect in the crystal so it depends upon the application that we should uh, you can say uh, go with uh, you can say so it depends upon the application that whether the defect or imperfection sorry imperfection is helpful or not okay now crystalline defects can be classified on the basis of their geometry like point imperfection line imperfection less surface and grain boundary imperfection or volume imperfection today we are discussing about point imperfection and line imperfections okay line defect or point defect whatever the you can say the word goes the dimension of a point defect are close to those of an interatomic space okay with linear defects their length in several orders of magnitude is greater than their width okay you can find out that the point defects they are found you can say that somehow a point is missing but if you go with the linear defects line defects they see that it has a greater magnitude so these defects have a small depth while their depth width and length may be several orders larger obviously because what happens that a uh, defect on the surface but it uh, you can say even in terms of length and width they uh, you can see it, it, it becomes of a higher order then volume defects like pores and cracks okay with uh, you can say having a dimensions or having a measurements so we all will be studying these So today we will go with the first two, that is point imperfections or defects or line imperfections or defects. So here I am giving you just a short, uh, you can say, uh, idea of uh, point defects. 
okay here you can see that some simple defects in the lattice lattice i have told you earlier okay the what so here you can see that uh, the a is showing a vacancy that is there is some empty space inside it at a particular point that is shown as short feed effect then b stands for interstitial means that the atom has fallen in between entered some other space so this interstitial then c denotes here uh, vacancy that is interstitial pair that it is the place that is cycle defect d is die vacancy that uh, two empty spaces then e is split interstitial that you can say uh, split it in two spaces or more whatever is the depending upon the condition and here the boxes shows vacant sites okay which means a vacancy is there okay so these are small or elementary point defects which are uh, useful to understand see how these are helpful to you i'll tell you uh, what happens that when uh, uh, during uh, you can say uh, get, uh, having the microscopic view of some part uh, to find the defects or you can say if you are studying the crystal structure you will find that these defects if found they may uh, provide you with some negative uh, aspects and with some uh, positive aspects it depends upon the application but uh, to identify that which defect or imperfection exists in the crystal one should know these uh, types of uh, defects and uh, have a knowledge so that proper uh, you can say investigation can be done by the inspector okay now uh, one more thing that uh, one should be aware that when it comes to uh frankel defect one should find out that is there a vacancy and the uh, paired atom is nearby or not or is there in the lattice we have to be aware of that also you know i'll explain you further also when you study deeply about this that okay? so point imperfections you know we start with the main thing that the, the previous slide was just an idea okay these are the things that exist the point imperfections which are lattice errors at isolated lattice points take place due to imperfect uh, packing of atoms obviously in a lattice if there is some uh, you can say imperfect packing then only these kind of uh, imperfect uh, sorry defects come uh, atoms during crystallization the point imperfections also take place due to vibration of atoms at high temperature that is a uh, very good point at high temperature only that they become loose and if at that time such kind of vibrations occur then the mobility is easier point imperfections are completely local in effect that example a vacant lattice site obviously if there is a vacancy at the nearby uh, uh, site then automatically if temperature rises then the mobility is possible point defects are always present in crystals and they are present results in decrease in the free energy that is one of the point to be considered one can compute the number of defects at equilibrium concentration at a certain temperature as small n is equals to capital n exponential of these values i can explain these value what all these stand for see small n stands for number of imperfections Capital N stands for number of atomic sites per mole. K is Boltzmann constant, and Ed is free energy required to form the defect. T is absolute temperature. Abs, it is uh, you can say at the bottom, okay. And uh, uh, T is uh, sorry, sorry uh, typically of the order one electron volt, and uh, K is having a value. Uh, 8.16 tends to the minus 5, and the temperature is around 1000 K. Now, what happens that 
these are the values that we should know okay while evaluating the sample now we'll go further vacancies the first kind and the common type of defect uh, the simplest point defect is a vacancy this refers to an empty uh, unoccupied site of a crystal lattice that is a missing atom or a vacant atomic site okay this is the simplest form of this you can see in that diagram also uh, something is missing or vacant okay and uh, this kind of effects these are Eyes due to uh, you can say a kind of uh, you can say uh, imperfect packing, okay, because during original crystallization or from thermal vibrations of the atoms at high temperature. See what happens at high temperature. As I told you earlier, also due to some vibrations, the mobility is possible. So uh, these vacancy defect can take place at that time. Okay, now there is no limit on vacancy. Like it can be a vacancy of two, or it may be vacancy of more than two. Okay, you can say a dire vacancy or a tri vacancy. It can happen. So the atoms surrounding a vacancy tend to be closer, thereby distorting the lattice plane. Because if you want that the vacancy doesn't goes further, if you found that the it should be uh, closely packed, so that distortion doesn't happen. So vacancy are the most important kind of point defects. They accelerate all processes associated with displacement of atoms, diffusion or powder sintering. Okay. So what happens that this uh, diffusion? So you all know we have said earlier also powder sintering is a technique of powder metallurgy. Okay. So this. Kind of defect may be found in powder metallurgy or sorry powder sintering also. Okay, we go further. Then this ah uh, this is a small diagram showing all the defects that I have uh, shown you earlier in one common lattice, but here it is in independent vacancy, triangle, interstitial, substitutional, and short key defect. Okay, now if we go further, interstitial imperfection uh, in a closed packed structure of atoms in a this atomic packing factor is low. Obviously, I have told you about atomic packing factor in your earlier class. Uh, body centered structure, uh, body centered cubic structure, face centered cubic structure, and HCP uh, is low. Like uh, a simple cubic has low packing factor, two point five two. An extra atom may be lost within the crystal structure very easily. So it is known as interstitial position, that is voids. And an extra atom can enter the interstitial space or void between the regularly positioned atoms only when it is substantially smaller than the parent atom. Otherwise, it will produce atomic distortion. What happens is that uh, suppose an extra atom is trying to enter into the space. The space is also called as a void. Okay, so when it is allowed to enter, what happens that uh, the the atom that is entering it should be smaller than the parent atom. It should not to be more powerful than the parent atom because it will create some sort of distortions, atomic distortions. So if it is smaller, then it can easily enter inside. Then, ha, because Only then the it can fill the space. If it is more, then automatically it will disturb the nearby atoms also. So it will lead to distortions, atomic distortions. That is where the smaller atoms can enter. Then a defect is known as interstitial defect, and it can be uh, you can see that interstitial T's can be single interstitial or di interstitial or tri interstitial. But there is one common thing that the The APF atomic packing factor is low, then only this uh, defect can happen. Then Frankel defect, Frankel defect. You all know that whenever there is a missing atom, okay, there is a missing atom which is responsible for vacancy, occupies an interstitial site. Remember the words, then you will understand. Whenever a missing atom which is responsible for vacancy. 
occupy the interstitial side responsible for interstitial defect the defect is known as tranquil defect matlab it is atom which move will show that it will lead to some vacancy but it occupies another space showing a kind of a interstitial defect this is kind of a tranquil defect understood this defect also okay then short key defect and the short key defect how it is saying that these imperfections are similar to vacancy matlab something is missing and this defect is caused whenever a pair of positive and negative ions is missing understood means balancing whenever a pair of positive and negative ions is missing from a crystal this type of crystal imperfection maintains a charge neutrality okay because plus minus both is missing so it maintains a charge neutrality in frankel what happens vacancy is there and it creates a vacancy plus that all those create also interstitial enters into some other space short key defect what happens that it doesn't enter the positive and negative ions both are missing okay so it it maintains a charge neutral okay now substitutional defect whenever a foreign atom replaces a parent atom of the lattice understand substitutional something substitute whenever a foreign atom replaces the parent atom of the lattice and thus occupies the position of parent atom the defect caused is called as substitutional defect and in this type of defect the atom which replaces the parent atom may be of the same size or slightly smaller or greater than the parent atom in interstitial there was a condition that it should not be bigger than the parent atom but substitutional defect it doesn't had a condition it is saying that the atom the substitutional atom is replacing a parent atom but its size it may be smaller or same or greater than the parent atom it doesn't matter what matters that a foreign atom which comes replaces the parent atom of the lattice and occupies its position then it is called as substitutional defect somewhere it can be helpful somewhere it cannot be it depends upon the properties it is giving to the material or the work piece and so on when the temperature is raised thermal vibration takes place this result in the defect of a symmetry and deviation in the shape of the atom okay you are it's like temperature reading some shaking vibrations are happening then automatically the vision and distortion takes place and atoms they get disturbed so this lead to a this has effect on the magnetic and electric property so these were the common point defects like vacancy frankel defect short key defect substitutional defect interstitial defect uh, phonon these six were the common point defects that we all know and uh, all kinds of point defects they distort the crystal lattice and have a certain influence on the physical properties in commercial pure metals point defects increase the electrical resistance and have almost no impact on the mechanical properties when it comes to pure metals only okay don't go for the pure and pure metals only but you know that pure metals have little uh, applications nowadays the world is of uh, you can say uh, composites where we go for alloys 
we go for a mixture of two or more metal and non metals uh, and the new material will have the advanced properties okay but it is having the properties of the parent materials plus some new materials also so uh, commercially pure metals are less used than the alloys so only at high temperature high concentration of effects in irradiated metals the ductility and other properties are reduced noticeably so in addition to point defects created by thermal fluctuations point defects may also be created by other means now uh, it is like something new to know one method of producing an excess number of point defects at a given temperature is by quenching or quick cooling from a higher temperature uh, this is a kind of a heat treatment process quenching what happens in quenching that you heat up the material in a furnace at a very high temperature not melting it just heating at a high temperature and then you immediately from the furnace put it into a, a, a quenching zone in a liquid or water it may be a uh, liquid can be an oil of particular density or water so what happens that due to immersion of uh, that um, uh, hot work piece from the furnace into the uh, quenching media the sudden cooling takes place quick cooling takes place so what happens at this point some uh, point defects may take place as given as told to you and this is like you can say a uh, kind of uh, you can say uh, creation of uh, point defects uh, so uh, this is also a good idea if you want to go or add some new properties to your work piece another method of creating excess uh, defects is by severe deformation of the crystal lattice that is by hammering or rolling uh, these are basically uh, primary processing uh, operations that are done on the work piece okay uh, what happens that uh, uh, if you want to get a new shape uh, maybe a circular shape or maybe you want to get a flat uh, shape after casting so what you do that you uh, heat up uh, material or work piece to a particular temperature and then you try to hammer it or like changing its shape try to change the shape or try to uh, if you want to go for some bars then you can go with the rolling process uh, heating here is not that much you can say important it uh, you wish your wish you can also uh, there is also cold forging or cold rolling in which you don't heat the material you just work on the at room temperature only so at that point also uh, these uh, defects uh, can happen can take place now the lattice that still remains its general crystalline structure numerous defects are introduced while doing this two kinds of process so uh, two processes are there by through which these point defects are created one is quenching then second is uh, uh, by hammering or by rolling then there is also method of creating excess point defects is by external bombardment of atom of high energy particles example from the beam of a cyclotron or by the neutron in a nuclear reactor okay the first uh, first particle collides with the lattice atoms and displaces them thereby causing a point defect uh, you can see in the nuclear uh, you can say fusion process how in the nuclear reactor the neutron is responsible for uh, for this process so what happens that uh, through this also a point defects can be introduced 
okay the number of point defects uh, created in this manner depends only upon the nature of the crystal and on the bombarding particles and not on the temperature see the third category or third method that they have told you it is done in a controlled manner okay if you are doing this process in uncontrolled manner then it may lead to some issues so i suggest that the third method is there because what happens that you are leading to uh, causing a point defect but uh, apart from just a point defect a certain amount of energy is also released okay before by by bombarding of atoms okay or by using the high energy particles energy also released and that should be controlled okay so we should take care of all the processes that the third process is should be in a controlled manner as written here also and uh, let's look further then line defects or dislocations now we have studied about uh, various point defects now we are going with the line defects now line imperfections are called dislocation and i'll show you in the diagram that how this this location is there see point is a point gets uh, you can say move from one place to another or gets uh, you can say uh, uh, is not there available but line infractions it uh, you can say it can disturb a surface or a layer okay so these are also called as dislocations a linear disturbance of atomic arrangement can which can move very easily on the slip planes to the crystal is known as dislocation okay there are planes i'll i'll explain you also the line imperfections are one dimensional imperfection in the geometrical sense of the atomic arrangement which can very easily occur on the slip plane through the crystal is known as dislocation okay the most important kind of linear defects are edge and screw dislocation one of the most common kinds of linear defects linear dislocations are edge and screw dislocation i'll show you later in the diagrams also how these are caused the first is during solidification of crystalline solids the dislocation are caused normally due to during solidification of crystalline solids second is permanent or plastic deformation of crystalline solids a third is by atomic mismatch in solid solutions fourth is by phase transformation and fifth is by due to thermal stress or external stress causing plastic flow okay i repeat once again so that you have a better understanding here dislocation are normally caused by if during a solidification of a crystalline solid okay if not properly done then this problem occurs then permanent or plastic deformation of crystalline solids if proper uh, methodology is not followed then this kind of dislocation takes place by atomic mismatch in solid solution okay it is the sentence is self explanatory then phase transformation by uh, heating a particular material of white providing certain heat if you are increasing the temperature then the phase transitions or phase phase transformation phase transitions take place so in that case also the uh, defects or dislocations may occur then due to thermal stress or ex uh, external stress causing plastic flow both these defects are most strikingly imperfections and are responsible for useful property of ductility of in metals ceramics and crystalline polymers i mean the screw and edge dislocations we are talking about that then edge dislocation now this type of dislocation is formed by adding an extra partial plane of atom to the crystal edge dislocation understand something is added an extra partial plane to the crystal an edge dislocation in its cross an edge dislocation in its cross section is essentially the edge of an extra half plane in the crystal 
I'll show you in the diagram. Okay, I'll show you in the diagram. See how this in the A diagram an extra plane. Okay, you can see in the A diagram how this S, S dislocation is shown. The lattice around dislocation is elastically distorted. Elastically. Okay, not plastically, elastically distorted. If you, it may regain its original position if the, uh, you can say, extra plane of atom is moved. Uh, the figure that I showed just now, this shows a cross section of a crystal where atoms that are shown by the dots arranged in a perfect hollowly manner. When an extra half plane is inserted from the top, the displacement of atoms as shown in the figure B. Okay, see here. Uh, there is this figure 49. How this an extra plane is there inserted okay from the top, then how the displacement is takes place. You can see in the center in the figure B when the extra plane is inserted, then elastically the uh, remaining uh, atoms on both the sides, how they have made uh, their way, their positions by decreasing the distances between them on both the sides and uh, going for plastic deformation. Okay, you can see here in the B diagram, it's very easily visible. Let me just show you this. Okay, uh, the top and bottom of the crystal above. There is a difference in the above, above and uh, bottom crystals that you can easily see. If you want, I can show to you once again. See, there is a difference. You can see a line x y dividing the in dividing the whole. You can say plane into two parts. And when the, on the upper then the extra plane is inserted, you can see that the uh, you can see the geometry of the plane. Um, one is above x y plane and one is below x y plane. There is a difference. Okay, the arrangement also is changed. So you should understand that how edge dislocation can bring changes. Uh, so we are going with the head. So this is uh, just a diagram showing edge dislocation and screw dislocation. Okay, the screw dislocation is coming in the coming slides. Then two two kind of dislocation: positive dislocation and negative dislocation. If the dislocation takes place above uh, above the plane slip, it is called positive dislocation. Matlab x y plane above. Okay, above the plane slip, it is called positive dislocation. It is noted by inverted i, it is noted t sorry. And negative dislocation, if the dislocation takes place below the slip plane, it is called as negative dislocation. Okay, means extra plane half plane get entered. From the bottom, this negative dislocation. If extra plane enters from the top, it is positive dislocation. Near the dislocation, the distortion in the crystal is due to the presence of zones of compression and tension in the crystal lattice. Obviously, if uh, anything extra is entering in, inside, then there is a zones of compression and tension. Obviously, in the crystal lattice. The lattice above the line of dislocation is in the state of compression whereas below this line is in tension okay like in the positive dislocation the above line of dislocation it is a state of compression and in uh, below the line it is in tension the dislocation line is a region of higher energy than rest of the crystal like right? because at this point the you can understand that it's a zone of high energy then this is a simple diagram showing again the edge dislocation. Then burger vector. In this also you need just a slight glimpse. Okay, we will go, go a little faster on this. So magnitude and the direction of the displacement are defined by a vector called burger vector, which characterizes a dislocation line. Okay, and this burger vector can be determined by considering a perfect crystal as shown in the figure 50A. Uh, 
uh, see here this is the figure in which there are uh, two figures one on the left one on the right and we can see in the a left figure it is uh, in proper uh, you can say shape but in the right side you see that uh, some another extra plane has entered on the from the above side creating a dislocation okay and uh, this is uh, you can say deformation of buffer vector ba then let's uh, read this the starting from the point a if we go x steps number of steps towards right say x goes to 5 then take y step downward towards y equals to 4 again x steps towards left and finally reach y step upward then we add up at the starting point a okay because the region enclosed by the burger sector is perfect like in figure A, it is perfect. The, it will be going five steps on the right, then by four steps at the bottom, then again left five steps, then again upward four steps. In the left figure, it is perfect. Okay, understood till now. Then, uh, with no line imperfections across it, and then the procedure is repeated in a zone in a real crystal containing a distribution. Then in the figure B, we see that the contour described in the real crystal turns out to be unclosed. The vector required for the closing the contour is the burger vector. The burger vector is upon as this location is equal to the interatomic space and perpendicular to the disclosed this dislocation line. Like here, it is seen that you can easily understood that if you follow the same thing, there is a disturbance. Traditional bugger vector BA. So, if some dislocation happens, we should understand that where the bugger vector will affect. Now, the skew dislocation, the formation of uh, skew dislocation is shown in figure 48 B. I have uh, this is the figure that you can easily see that in the figure B there are some points shown and there is a dislocation uh, which I will be explaining now. In this the atoms are displaced in two separate planes perpendicular to each other. The atoms are displaced in two separate planes. Understand the atoms are displaced in two separate planes perpendicular to each other. Okay, another diagram showing it. I'll just show you. This is the diagram. Understood. In the A diagram, you can easily see that simple arrangement there. In the B diagram, you can see there is a dislocation. Okay, this is called as a screw dislocation. You can see that something from the right has shifted to the left. A, B, C. You can see simple A, B, C, a kind of a dislocation that is shown. In the figure A, A, all is perfect. In the figure B, if you see that from the figure on the right side has gone to the left and A, B, C is introduced. Okay, this is the dislocation. I hope you have understood from the diagram. The displacement of atoms in the region ABC is shown, just I show you. The arrangement of atoms in this screw dislocation appear like that of a screw or a helical surface. This is a kind of a screw dislocation. Line was different. A plane comes. Okay, screw dislocation other. There is an effect you can easily see here. You can easily see here. Like this. This is a A diagram is showing a perfect shape and in the B it is showing a dislocated hmm. you can easily understood with this a screw dislocation does not exhibit time motion and uh, the following effects of screw dislocation that is the force required to form and move at screw dislocation is somewhat greater than required to initiate an end dislocation obviously you are going for a screw dislocation this requires a no force Without breaking the continuity of the lattice, the plastic deformation is possible under low stress. Right? Screw dislocation causes distortion to of the crystal lattice for a considerable distance from the center of the line and takes the form of file distortion of the planes. Right. 
because what happens is that uh, if the if, if from center of the line if it works then balancing is there otherwise it may lead to distortions so this is okay next the effect of dislocation is specially pronounced on the strength of the crystal obviously if the, there is no strength then how it will survive okay it, how it will uh, be balanced then the experimental we measured yield strength of metals turned out to be only the 1000 of its theoretical value the loss being mainly attributed to the effect of mobile dislocation right and uh, like by increasing substantially the distortion dislocation density and decreasing the dislocation mobility the strength of a metal can be raised several times compared with the strength in the annealing state annealing i'll explain you in the coming chapter which is a kind of a heat treatment process so there you will uh, understand this uh, point in a better way a uh, faultless uh, pieces of metals in particular tin ore and tin which were obtained by crystallization from the gaseous state exhibit a strength approaching a critical value see when you understand that uh, annealing process then these points will be more understandable by you by why this this factors this this location uh, what are their effect on the strength of the crystals okay then we will go further okay now with the mcqs uh, i hope you have enjoyed the lecture on this line and as uh, dislocation i uh, i it's really good then uh, we go with the mcq the defect that uh, occurs due to a displacement of an ion is known as you understand it is a kind of a frankel defect which are the following defect are point defects so it is a kind of a zero dimensional defect and in which of the following defect the density of the crystal is affected you can easily understand that in the short key the density of the crystal is affected then short key and frankel defects are you understand that both are vacancy and interstitial defect okay then how are the point defect classified based on the source of atom it is an extensive and intrinsic okay no and a dissolution in which an extra plane portion of a plane of atoms or a half plane terminates in the crystal it is called as a edge dislocation we just seen in the diagram the diagram was really good this is the simplest uh, point defect this refers to an empty unoccupied site of a crystal lattice that is a missing atom or a vacant atomic site such defects may arise either from imperfect packing during original crystallization or from thermal vibrations of the atoms at high temperature it is called as a vacancy simple to understand in a close packing structure of atom the crystal and extra atom will enter the interstitial space or void between the regularly positioned understand the effect between the regularly positioned atom only when it is substantially smaller than the parent atom especially for the parent atom as simple interstitial defect okay very easy to understand then ah one more thing that uh, the defect is no either either it will produce a atomic distortion okay the complete question should be understood then the ninth question in a closed packed atom in a crystal these imperfections are similar to vacancies this effect is caused by positive and negative ions the name says from a crystal this imperfection may have charge utility short key defect very easy to understand then the uh, last mcq for today uh, in a closed packed structure of atom in a crystal whenever a foreign atom is put to the parent atom of the lattice and thus occupies the position of parent atom the defect all this is called uh, uh, just just go through the uh, type of defects it is called substitutional defect okay in this what happens the atom of the parent atom may be of the same size or slightly smaller or greater than the parent atom so uh, these are the references which i think you all should uh, go through for better knowledge and for better understanding uh, though the ppt was well explainable it was having sufficient diagrams to explain the topics and and it it has given you also a given a better idea of 
uh, how these could uh, point defects or line defects they actually look like the diagrams give you a major uh, better idea of how actually things look like so thank you all for today